Hi, my name's Dylan and I'm the owner of Stupid Raisins. This week, a new Harry Potter movie comes out called Fantastic Beasts. I'm really excited. I remember when the fourth book came out, I got it as a PDF and I would read it at work. And every time my boss would come by, I would hit Alt-Tab and switch to a boring spreadsheet. He had no idea. Please don't tell him. Well, I thought it would be fun to recreate the titles from the trailer in Final Cut Pro. Let's take a look at the inspiration and what we'll build. That phoenix is so awesome. We won't make that, but we will make the rest. Looks awesome, right? Let's get started. Expelliarmus! The first step is to download and install the Animales Fantastic font. It was designed to look exactly like the font from the trailer, and this is vital. I have a screenshot of the trailer, and we'll use that to line things up and get an idea of what to make and how to make it. First step is go to your 3D title browser and drag and drop the Tumble 3D title into your timeline. Go to the text tab of the title and disable build out. Then go to the text tab and update the text. Use a dollar sign for the first S. That way when we use the special font, it will make that special Phoenix S. Change the font to Animales Fantastic and you'll see that new cool looking S. Change the size to about 300. And let's squeeze these letters together Put the tracking to negative 10. Go down to the 3D text section and set the depth to 20. Then under front edge size, set the width to 27 and the depth to 15. This gives it a nice sharp look. We're already on our way to an amazing looking title. Open up the lighting section Enable the self shadows and under the environment change the type to parking lot and set the intensity to 113%. Change the contrast to about 60. Head down to the materials section. Change the substance to metal and then change the type to custom. Select that middle tag and set its location to 50% right in the middle. Then change the color to a dark blue. Change the color of the two tags on either end to a white. Alright, now it's looking more like that. We're seeing some nice shininess like we see in the other in the original, the uh, reference image. All right, let's make this thing look a little, little beat up. Add some distresses. Click on add layer and add scratches, dents, and stains. For scratches, select scratches three and set the depth to 50%. For dents, leave it at dents one and set the depth to 50% as well. And for stains, select stain six, and you're done. Now it looks like it's been in a proper wizard battle. Turn off the reference image. Take a look at the animation. As the letters zoom and tumble in, when they're close to the camera, they're in focus. We don't want that. If we take a look at the trailer, we can see that some of the letters, as the letters are closer to the camera, they're out of focus. Makes it feel like it's truly flying by the camera. So if we were to use real 3D, that might, uh, that gets really heavy on the computer. So we're gonna cheat it a little bit. We're gonna use a Gaussian filter. Drop it on your title. And then you want to set a keyframe 
right about where the letters settle and then set another keyframe at the beginning for a mount. At the end, at the second keyframe, set the amount to zero. Now as it zooms, or now as they come past the camera and get into position, they go from being out of focus into focus. Now you can fine tune the animations by selecting the title and pressing Control V. That'll pop up this animation chart and you can move the keyframes if you want to adjust when it gets in and out of focus. I moved the keyframes over a little bit. I like that. It looks a little bit better. Now, Alt-Drag the title to make a duplicate. Go to the Text tab and let's enter in Fantastic. Change the size to 160. Turn the reference image back on We'll use that to line up the text in the right spots. Select the title, then select the text box, and you'll get some arrows for moving it around. Drag up on the green arrow to slide it into position. And then for beasts, we're going to drag down on the green arrow to slide it down into position. There we go. Oh man, that looks fantastic. Let's take a look at the reference image. You'll see on the Phoenix S that there is a lens flare at the top of it. So we need to add one as well. I've created a lens flare that you can download from my website if you don't have one, and you can put it on there. So drag that into your timeline and change the blend mode to screen. Go ahead and turn the reference image off so you're not getting confused. Select the lens flare and let's change its position so that it's right up on top of that creature S, the first S. There we go. Now use the fade in, fade out effect that I made and is available for download on my website for free and apply it to that flare. Set the fade in time to 20 and then the fade out time to zero. Now as the S gets into position, you'll start to see the flare turning on. We want to line it up so that the flare starts to glow right as it's getting into position. Let's take a look at the reference image again. You'll notice behind the letters we see some dark clouds. So let's work on creating the background for our title. I have a great resource for you. You're going to love this website. Mitch Martinez has shot a ton of different videos in 4K and he gives them away for free. For this project, we're interested in the smoke section. You can use any of these smoke elements you want, but I picked Smoke 40. I like that one best. Just click on the download link and it will pop up a window where you can download it. Now, drag and drop your smoke element below the titles in your timeline. We're going to add some effects to this title, or excuse me, to this clip. Get a vignette mask and set the size to 1.2 and the fall off to 0.5. Change the scale to 90 and then drop the opacity down to about 50. Now we're going to duplicate that and I'm going to put it above the original smoke layer. And what we're going to do is fill out the smoke a little bit. We're going to move it down to the bottom left corner and we're going to change the rotation as well. Drop the opacity, and let's set the rotation to negative 200. And adjust the scale as well. And of course, this will be different for you. As you tweak it and get it to look exactly how you want, you'll have different values than, than what I have, and that's fine. Now I'm going to use the trim tool 
to change the timing. I'm going to change when the clip starts and when it ends. That way I don't have the same exact smoke pattern up on the screen as before. Once I've got that how I like it, duplicate the smoke element and now we're going to move it over to the right hand side. We're going to change the rotation and move it up a little bit too. Drop the opacity. And then let's change the timing on this as well. I want it to be kind of wispy, so I'm pulling it back in time as the smoke kind of thins out. All right, I'm happy with that. Next, select the clips and make a compound clip. Name it. And then on that compound clip, we're going to add a couple other filters. We're going to add cool tones and two color gradient. Make sure cool tones is below the two color gradient in the inspector. In two color gradient, change the blend mode to soft light and put the start and end colors both black and change the opacity to 100. That kind of darkens it down and makes it look a little, myster little more mysterious. However, I think it's too dark for what I want. So go back into the compound clip and play with the opacities until you get them how you want. In this case, I've put the opacity back up on all of them considerably. I like that better. You can see it but it's still not overpowering. I'm going to change the timing on this one a little bit. I want it to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm using the, tr the trim tool, and you can get to that by just pressing T. As you build your title, you'll want to tweak things to get them to look right. You want to change the timing. For the main smoke behind it, I want to start where, where it's really thick. So. I took the trim tool and started it all the way at the beginning. All right, that's looking a lot better to me. I like how it matches up with the shape of the Fantastic Beasts text. Go back into your compound clip, your background compound clip, select the top smoke layer, copy it, come back out, paste it above the titles and the flare and the background. What we're going to do is add some smoke above the letters. So it's like it's kind of enveloped in the smoke. Move it around until you find a position you like, and then adjust the scale accordingly. I also rotated it to give it a little bit of a little bit of variety. Change the blend mode to screen. And drop the opacity. Use the trim tool to move your timing. In this case, I wanted it to be pretty wispy over the top, so I'm pulling. I'm having the start and end time further along in the clip as the smoke dissipates. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Select the compound clip, copy it, then select the top smoke layer and press Command Shift V. That will paste the attributes, and in this case, we're just going to paste the effects. The paste attributes is a quick way to add the cool tones and the two color gradient effect that we used earlier to the same clips. I also adjusted the opacity to get it just how I like. Next, we're going to trim up the timing so that everything ends when the flare ends. Now select all of those clips, make a compound clip out of it. All right, this is looking fantastic. We've just got a couple more details to add and we're done. Select the compound clip and add the fade in, fade out effect 
Set the fade in time to 10 and leave fade out time at 20. Also add the letterbox effect. This adds the black bars on the top and bottom and makes it look more like a movie. Set the ratio to 235-1 and now you can see the black bars on the top and bottom. If you want to make it a little bit uh, more noticeable or if you want the bars a little bit bigger, you can adjust the slider in the inspector to change the box size. That looks fantastic. Now what would really sell this is an amazing sound design. I used motion pulse sounds from Video Copilot. Let's start with a whoosh sound as the letters go by the camera. The whoosh builds up so I need to add a little bit of blank space at the beginning. I add a gap by pressing Alt W and then change the duration to one second. Now I can move that whoosh sound into place. Next I need a sound for that flare. I need something to make it sound like it's kind of throbbing and it's there. So I'm using this atmospheric sound effect. It's just a matter of tweaking it, getting it just right with the timing. Also I have a cool little monster growl from the motion pulse set and then I finish it off with some cinematic waves to add a little bit of urgency to the to the video. Trim up the audio and then these are all pretty loud so and I want it to be subtle so I just select them all and I set the volume down to about negative 12. This atmospheric one was exceptionally loud so I'm going to turn that down even more. Let's take a look and listen. We've created something professional and fun all within Final Cut Pro. If you want to download the flare or any of the sounds, just go to stupidraisins.com. Also, if you don't want to do all of this work, no problem. I've created a template and you can download that as well. You can install it in Final Cut Pro and everything has been done for you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Have a great week and expecto patronum! Just dang it, it doesn't work! <laughs>